And a quick note before we get into uh, the dispatch here this week, if you're if you're listening to this on the video version, if you're listening to this on YouTube or Rockfin or on Facebook or or any of the video platforms that I upload this to, you might notice that that uh, that you, you're 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 not really looking at my face. You're not really looking at my face, <laughs> and there's a reason for that, uh, and that is because I don't have my new um, home studio situation fully set up yet, and uh, that that uh, will be set up over the next few weeks probably. So for the, for the next few weeks, uh, if if you're listening to the dispatches on any of the video platforms, you're probably just looking at a still image. Uh, and that's fine for now, uh, but you know I am working on getting a new background, uh, new backdrop, new lighting, new new video accoutrement. So uh, be patient, uh, be patient with me on that front. Uh, but uh, but if you do enjoy the dispatches, uh, you know make sure make sure you hit the like button, make sure you you share it around, make sure you are subscribed for more content just like this. And now, without any further ado. Let's dive into this week's dispatch. With a new president being prepped to take over the American empire, everybody is wondering who will the elderly champion of neoliberalism, Joe Biden, pick to add to his cabinet? People like the goat of all octogenarians, Bernie Sanders, is being floated as the head of the Department of Labor. Now, this department is so in the fringes of American politics. Most people thought it was neoliberal satire against socialism, right? This is one of those departments that's so disrespected by neoliberal neo-fascists. Its main office is in the sub-basement of a sub-basement with a rotary phone and a Lisa computer. It's a very specific reference at the top of the dispatch. Now, America's grandma with a plan, Elizabeth Warren, is also being floated for the Department of Treasury. And this will work out great since her plan to tax billionaires is to hit them where it hurts after their first $50 billion. Look, if you really want to hit the billionaires where it hurts, ban them. If you make more than a billion dollars, then you need to be taxed at 90% of your wealth and all of your employees get free health care forever. And, and, that, and that is, yes, even after they get fired, they still get health care from your billionaire ass. Look, if you're not going to be benevolent with all that money, then uh, I guess we'll have to force it on you. And, and by we, I mean the, the people that will be taking over the government and running it more efficiently than the overpaid bags of flatulence we call American politicians. But look, let's be honest with ourselves here. Can we really expect a president that has a track record of overfunding killer cops, voting for every war with the excitement of a child opening Christmas presents, and putting a large amount of black people in prison since the 70s to choose progressives uh, and mildly liberal politicians to be in charge of any department of the government. No, no, we cannot. And if you think we can, you haven't paid attention to the last three months of American history, let alone the last three decades or the last three centuries. If anything, Biden's cabinet will be filled with former Obama and Clinton's intelligence actors and war architects so that the American empire's military budget doesn't go to waste. You know, this is about recycling the war budget here, folks. Right? The GOP-controlled Senate just approved a $696 billion military budget, while the mech resistance in the House of Representatives approved a $694 billion military budget. And that $2 billion will be used to manufacture Black Lives Matter and rainbow ribbons to tie on all the drone bombs both parties want to drop on all those pesky brown and socialist countries. Unity, you know, but, but with, like, with like explosions and stuff. It's good to know that American imperialism has the maturity of a seventh grader. Look, I want to be friends with everybody, but also let's blow some shit up, you guys. Let's blow some shit up. My dad just bought me some new bombs and we can blow some stuff up. 
Look, I've said it once and I'll say it again. America is a teenager and it needs to put its boner away. This is not the time. It's not the time for your boner, America. Now, you'd assume that this obscenely large amount of money would be used to not only pay the folks currently in the military, but a larger amount would go into ensuring that the working class that were sent to fight in these wars were taken care of. Alas, the Department of Veterans Affairs barely gets a percent of that budget. Veterans are left with no health services and a bevy of mental and physical issues that are caused by, by their time serving the ambitions of the rich. I mean, funding Mike Pompeo's lies gets a higher percentage of the budget than veterans' health care, right? Funding a person to constantly take care of John Bolton's mustache gets a higher percentage of, of the budget than veterans' health care. And I'd give you a third example to fulfill the rule of threes here, but the funding for that joke was absorbed by the military-industrial complex. Yeah, that's right. They're weaponizing jokes. I mean, considering most comedians on national TV never address our raging war erections, and the ones that do are heavily suppressed. Now, one of these battles, uh, healthcare battles, is... Uh, to get those that have been negatively affected by burn pits some health care. The burn pits were used to get rid of waste, which included plastic and styrofoam using jet fuel. This releases dioxins, which are known to be cancerous, the same dioxins that were found in the de debris of 9-11 too. Okay? Now, Trump did ban burn pits, but there is no politician that is fighting for the victims of burn pits. But a comedian and a 9-11 activist are. Former Daily Show host Jon Stewart and anti-war activist John Field are pushing to get the victims of cancerous burn pits health care to make sure that they don't have to be punished for the decisions made by sociopathic oligarchs. Now this includes President-elect Biden who claims that his own son got brain damage because of burn pits. Yet there's no regret for approving the war that led to the burn pits that caused his son's cancer. Maybe we can push Biden to the left and, you know, green up our military, where not only do we compost the waste, but also our enemies. That's right, com composting the war machine. That's what we're doing. Or, I, I think I have a better idea, we stop engaging in pointless, endless wars based on lies to profit the already wealthy. Okay, waging wars is, is not only detrimental to human life, but also to this planet. Wars are one of the largest factors of perpetuating climate change. And look, I'm not saying that Stuart and Field's mission is a waste of time, rather the opposite. I hope that they can get their legislation passed, considering Congress's work is done for them, right? At this point, all Congress has to do is say yes to taking care of veterans. I mean, Congress is basically the kid in group projects that plays video games and downloads porn on your parents' computer while the rest of the group does all the work and then at the end adds their name to it and takes all the credit. They're that douchebag kid, you know, the ones who's parents skipped out on a few hugs and now is someone that likes to watch the world burn because that's the only way they know how to show love. But you know, the love isn't like for the world or anything. It's, it's, it's just love for themselves. Look, hug your kids, parents, okay? Hug your children or else they, you, we might be creating a whole new generation of Mitch McConnell's and Joe Biden's and Nancy Pelosi's and we, and we don't need that shit. Stuart and Field already helped 9-11 first responders' medical bills get covered, and it wasn't because the neoliberals and the neocons of the United States C Congress felt like this was the right thing to do, but rather because they were guilted into it. And maybe they can do th that for, for the, burn victim, uh, the burn pit victims as well. But unfortunately, I don't think that the neoliberals and the neocons will be guilted into getting all of the veterans' health care coverage ending all of the wars and not ex engage in expanding the American empire more voraciously than the coronavirus. Look, imperialist warmongering is a virus that has no vaccine. 
Well, you know, except for anti-war activists and comedians. But thanks to propaganda, when it comes to supporting anti-war activists and comedians, the American populace has become vaccine deniers. Now, with this in mind, I doubt that the Biden administration is going to be filled with anyone remotely progressive, considering the most progressive that are part of the American pop culture politics reality show are against the neoliberal expansion of the American military. Now, Biden claims his cabinet will represent America, but I don't remember the American citizenry filled with proud nationalistic war criminals that hypocritically preach unity while dropping bombs on every brown country that wants to give their people health care. In fact, most Americans are against the perpetual endless wars and the lack of care for most of our veterans. Right now, we the people need to be more vehemently anti-war and anti-imperialist. And this would mean not only would we push back against the expansion of the American military into global communities, but also the prevention of militaristic police expanding into our communities. It means that the American people are going to have to organize, speak up, and demonstrate against this war machine. And if you're someone that wants to see an end to American emperorism, Joe Biden isn't really a president that represents you. He is a part of a long history of presidents for the warmongering oligarchs. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you for listening to this show. If you want to make a financial contribution to the show, you can do so by becoming a sustaining member or making a one-time donation at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. If you do become a sustaining member, you get unreleased stand-up comedy material that nobody else gets except for you guys, uh, weekly updates on all of the podcasts and videos that I put out, and early access to the full episodes of Forkful of Noodles that go up, and uh, and videos of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows when they do get recorded. So you guys get access to all that and free tickets to shows. Holy shit, why wouldn't you become a sustaining member? Uh, go over to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. While you're there, while you're on my website, you can download my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, You can uh, check out past episodes of this show, past episodes of Forkful of Noodles and Road Reflections. Uh, You can subscribe to my email list. Once a week, I send out an email letting people know uh, what's going on with me, all the videos, all the podcasts that I've dropped for the week so you have it in one place and the best way to check out those videos is via rockfin go to rockfin.com slash krishmohan ha ha rockfin is a blockchain cryptocurrency site that is primarily focused on making sure that content creators get paid for their work and it fights the censorship that you get from youtube and facebook so if you like my stuff uh, you can subscribe for $10 a month and you you get access to everything that Graham Elwood puts out, Lee Camp puts out, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Nico House, a whole laundry list of progressive content creators out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your support. If, if, if you enjoy this podcast, if you're a regular listener, make sure that you are subscribed to listen to this podcast on whatever network you like to listen to it on and leave us a review. As silly as it sounds, the reviews do help. It, it helps this podcast get discovered by new people. So those, those reviews, those likes, those shares all help out quite a bit. Thank you so much. And now onwards to the show.